Hot dog on a stick, that's good. Let's go hunt for some drums. Let's go. All right, YouTubers, we are on our way to Fresno, California. Now, I'm gonna do my very best to get all the talking done before I hit the freeway because I can only imagine that this little GoPro mic will freak the hell out once I'm on the freeway. So as far as what's going on, I'm going to as many shops as I can drive to in Northern California. This one's about three and a half hours away, so we're headed to Bentley's Drum Shop right now. And I don't want to know what the store has in stock. I don't want to know what they have and whether they have what I want because then that kind of takes the fun out of this hunt. And I think hunting for gear is probably even cooler than acquiring gear. When you're hunting for the gear, it's all these possibilities and like maybe they'll have this, maybe they'll have that. And I think that's the best part of all of this. So by knowing what they have in stock, that would ruin the hunt for me. Good morning, how can I help you today? Hi, can I get a venti hot green tea, the Emperor's Cloud? You said a venti hot Emperor's Cloud? Yes, please. Perfection. Anything else? That'll be it. Awesome. That'll be two ninety-five. Thank, Thank you. you. Now, full transparency here. I've never tasted coffee in my life. I really mean that. So I can't judge Starbucks as far as a coffee place, but I can tell you, as a tea fanatic, Emperor's Cloud is not that bad. If you're looking for a cup of green tea on the go, on the run, Emperor's Cloud, not that bad. Give it a go. We have arrived at Bentley's Drum Shop. I got a mask up. Let's go inside. Okay, so this is really cool. Uh, this is my first time actually ever seeing the Brooklyn Standard, my signature snare drum with Gretsch in a drum shop. And I wasn't expecting it, I wasn't even thinking about it, and I was just going through all the cool snare drums here, looking around, and all of a sudden I'm like, oh my god, that's my snare drum, it's so freaking cool. All right, we're here with Dana Bentley, from Bentley's Drum Shop. Buddy, good to see you, man. Mike, thanks for coming in today. Absolutely, awesome. absolutely, and I've done Three clinics, four clinics here? Yeah, quite a few actually. It's, yes. Yeah, you were one of the first shops that let me do a clinic when I wasn't a clinician. <laughs> and I was like, please, Absolutely. please let me come, man. <laughs> so, uh, so I've always talked about your amazing vintage room and just how much history you have collected. So would you mind walking us through no, it and no, showing no, us no. a little let's bit? Just come on back and let's take a look here. See the SKB case is kind of guarding the uh, That's right. The nondescript door. Come on in. Oh my god. All right, so uh, we're gonna start right here because I feel like I don't have that in my collection. What is that? That's a, a, a early Ludwig, uh, super Ludwig, so it's got a super sensitive strainer. Okay. Stipple gold with knobby gold hardware. And that's from the mid 20s, that one right there. 1920s. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And is this a for sale drum or is this part of your collection that I'm not allowed to have? Well, that one is part of the collection, uh. um, possibly for sale. Okay, Possibly. okay. Now, is that any different than the dance model snare that I bought here five or six years ago? That's a ago? great question. So, so the shell is identical, Okay. except it's got a parallel mechanism that runs through the middle of the drum. And with a normal snare drum, the wires will engage just one side. Okay. This one engages them evenly top and bottom uh. at the same time. And they're top, they're tight. Okay. So that's what that does. Got it. So we got one here in the bag. It's kind of unique. So when I visited the Gretsch factory in the early 2000s, this shell was just a shell way in the back corner on this kind of stackable, rickety shelf with, with, with paint cans and this and that. So I asked Mr. Gretsch about it and he said, yeah, we, we can make a drum out of that for you. So Paul Cooper, went ahead and did the build out. And Paul thinks this shell has been sitting there since the 60s. No way. And it's copper and it's all hammered. And the pattern, as you can see, appears to be the same in each, each pa uh, panel. Okay. But they're slightly different. So it's all done by hand. So wow. very unique. Oh, We've boy. got a couple of black beauties here, but, but these are unique. Um, Lubbock did offer a chrome beauty. 
It wasn't in the catalog, but these are chrome-plated black beauties, if you will. So this one's a super sensitive. And what's okay. different about this drum compared to the super, this has two sets of wires. Okay. Going through the drum. So let me go ahead and pull it off and we'll show it to you. Here. So this is a super sensitive. Okay. And you've got the one set obviously on the bottom, but then you've got another strainer right here that adjusts the wires that are inside the drum to push up and engage against the top head. So that makes it super wow. articulate. So this is super orchestral. Um, you just barely you get the full snare sound. And you can get oh, so there's snares top and bottom. Top and bottom. So and cool. you can disengage them independently from each other. And it's a Trixon double hi-hat stand. Wait, what? Yeah. Uh-oh. Why is that here? It seems like, it, was it just that 18s were rare at that time? Why, why does the price go through the roof from a 22 uh, name band kit to an 18 progressive jazz? Gotcha. Okay. Same era. Yeah. So it's, it's the rarity of the size. There are less 18, 12, 14s out gotcha. there than there are 22, 13, 16s. Okay. Same with 20, 12, 14s. Yeah. And then, you know, Gretsch is the quintessential jazz bebop drum. I mean, Elvin Jones, Tony Williams, Max Roach, all the greats played that outfit. Right. So if gotcha. you want that sound, you play that instrument and you play it at that size. Wow. I mean, my blue sparkle needs a friend. You can see it right here on this 20s Ludwig. And uh, there's a little plug, and that goes into a heater. And the heater would heat the inside of the drum and bring the temperature up. Because with calf drum heads, if you're playing during the winter, you're just going to go plop, plop, and there's no wow. tension. So it, it would warm up the temperature inside the drum, hence heating the heads, and they would tighten up. No way. Yeah, so that's what That's a real for. thing. Real thing. That's incredible. So this is a six and a half inch Gretsch from the 50s, and it's called the Dixieland model. Factory green. So that's the original the, color. Original paint, called the oh. green. It's missing the muffler, but they still make them the same as you know. <laughs> now at this time when this was made, was there only a three ply shell? Had they not gone to six ply yet? That's correct, they okay. had not gone to six ply yet. And just the fact that that's the original color. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if I have an option. I think I have to have that. Well, you can take this one home today. <laughs> First one in the trunk. There you go. Okay. Yeah, I have to have that. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. What a Great cool drum. To the crew, thank you guys. Thank you, Appreciate Mike. it. Great seeing you. Great seeing you. Thank and you. I will see you guys for a clinic. Yes. Soon. Yes. <laughs> All right, bye guys. Have a great day. All right guys, so I'm back now and I hope you had a blast just going along with me for the journey. I've got my drum and the reason I bought it, I mean, this is not an expensive drum. You can get these for between two to $300, but I filmed the matcha part yesterday before I left on my trip. And the fact that there was a drum that was almost matcha green, I'm like, I just have to have that. It'll, it'll, it'll bookend the video perfectly. So massive thanks to Bentley's Drum Shop for letting me in there. Huge thanks to Dana Bentley for all of the education. You guys only got to see about a tenth of the stuff that he showed me and taught me. It just would have been a two hour video. I don't know if you would have minded that. Also, there was something else that I got while I was there that was a gift from Dana that I'm just not ready to show yet. I, I honestly don't even think I could show it without tearing up. It was so special and meant so much to me and I feel like it deserves its own episode. So I will show you guys that later. But until then, that's the end of my very first vlog on YouTube. Later guys.